Wednesday, it's 6.30, and welcome to my Chinese takeaway cook-along. Tonight we're doing my chicken and pineapple dish, which is a real classic Chinese takeaway favorite. First thing I'm doing, I'm gonna chop some of my homegrown baby carrots. And I'm just gonna chop these into bite-sized pieces. I want them thin enough that they cook in a couple of minutes. Um, if you want your carrots crunchy, leave them a little bit bigger. Um, and then they'll retain some of their bite. Um, if, like me, you like your veggies nice and soft or a mush, um, cut them a little bit longer or chop them really thin and they'll cook really quickly. I have one garlic clove. I'm going to crush and just chop, not dead fine, but into kind of like that size. One onion, which I'm just going to chop into some squares. So I'll put that there. I'm going to use probably two thirds of my green pepper. Um, dead easy taking the seeds out. Literally, I've just chopped, um, not quite gone through the seeds. I'm just going to get this and I'm just literally just going to pull the seeds out, making a mess as he says that. But there you go. It's a kitchen. We do make messes every now and then. Um, my pepper, I'm just going to chop about the same size as my onions. Hey Lola, second day at school. So um, yeah, missing you like mad. But yeah, I'm hope hopefully you're having a nice time. And hello Auntie Dawn. No, um, no Elvis Presley tonight, we're listening to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is a little bit different. So um, tonight, um, if you've only just tuned in, I'm doing my chicken and pineapple. It's a really easy dish. There are a lot of similarities actually to the sweet and sour. So we've got the tomato sauce, the tomato puree, the vinegar, and the sugar going in. Okay, I think the only thing we're not actually putting in is the orange juice. Okay, these are homegrown tomatoes as well. Not part of the recipe, but again, I had some that have ripened up on the vine, so I thought that I'd use them. Tin of pineapple chunks and some chicken I've already pre-chopped. So I'm gonna get my wok on and hot. If you've got a non-stick wok, you can put your oil in at the beginning. Uh, if you're using one of my carbon, well, one of mine, but if you're using a carbon steel wok or a proper wok, make sure the wok is smoking hot before you start cooking. Otherwise you will have a problem with food sticking. So, tablespoon and a half of oil. And the first thing I'm gonna add tonight is my onion. Which I'm just gonna soften for about 20 or 30 seconds or so before adding my garlic and the rest of the veggies. And so this is going to be really quick. So we are literally going to be finished in about eight minutes or so from now. Now I've always been cooking. I've been a, I was a chef in my mom and dad's restaurant. Well, before I was 16 years old. So I mean, you know, I've been, we worked there every weekend. So I've just added my peppers and the garlic. Um, and it was only about five years ago that I decided that I was going to start sharing sort of like some of the um, recipes and some of the skills that I've learned in the kitchens. And in five years, it's been amazing really, and you guys have been phenomenal because um, you've supported me all the way. And you know, in, the, in, in that five years, you know, I've two books out, third books out in January, now a TV program, loads of magazines, loads of newspapers, and it's amazing that so many people love Chinese food and not only love it, they want to learn to cook it, which is fantastic. I think we all have that problem that when we go for a nice Chinese, well, when we go for a Chinese meal, we're, we've got these high expectations that the food's going to be this and the food's going to be that, you know, it's going to be juicy, it's going to be crunchy, it's going to be, you know, and it's going to hit our, you know, our taste buds and it's going to be fantastic. And then when it arrives on the table or we open that takeaway box, it's not always the case which is a shame. And I think that people that have gone out and bought the Chinese Takeaway Cookbook and the Veggie Chinese Takeaway Cookbook, now they're able to recreate those dishes at home and they're pretty much getting the, um, the results that they, they expect they were supposed to be getting when they ordered that take or went to that restaurant. So you probably notice that when I'm cooking, I can't like leave the wok to do what it's doing. Don't be scared of browning your ingredients. 
This just injects flavour. Now in a Chinese kitchen, there's like this massive Bunsen burner going on. And um, it gets hot so quick. And even when you put the ingredients in, it's, it's like instant, instant heat. And it, you get that caramelisation, uh, which we talk about pretty much every week. So it's really important that sometimes you just leave that rock alone and you allow these flavours to build at the bottom of the pan. Okay? So I'm just going to try and sear this chicken off. So in there at the moment, we've got onion, we've got garlic and we've got green peppers. Um, I'm now going to add my carrots. And again, I'll give it a stir and then I'll leave it alone again. You know, so I, I want, like I said, I'm looking at trying to build that caramelisation in each of the elements that are in that dish at the moment. Okay, I want that garlic to have that sweet bitterness. I want the onions to be tender but crunchy, but still have that char, char, char taste. The chicken to have that brown caramelisation. I want to be able to get the natural sugars out of it. So, and that's what's happening in there now. Okay, so in there, you can see, I've injected extra flavour just by letting uh, the pan sit and brown and caramelise. So to this now, I'm going to add my tomatoes. And in here, I have, there's about a cup of chicken stock. You might not need all of this. I'm going to start off with about half a cup. Or thereabouts. And now let's start building the sauce. So this is chicken and pineapple. So we've, we've got that natural aromat in there already. So that's the garlic, okay? Um, to that, I'm going to put my dries in first. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon of sugar. Now this sounds like a lot. This is going to be enough for two and maybe four as part of a meal. So there's about a tablespoon of sugar that's gone in. Followed by two tablespoons or thereabouts of rice vinegar. If you don't have rice vinegar, you can use cider vinegar. I'm going to add just a little bit more because this tablespoon is quite small actually. And again, Chinese cooking is about the eye. You do it by eye, do it by taste, do it by texture. Uh, you won't go wrong. And you know, if it's too sour, add a bit more sugar. If it's too salty, add a bit more sugar. Try not to make it too salty. Hence why I'm not going to put any salt in until the very end and I might not even use the salt. Um, I'm going to add a good tablespoon <coughs> of tomato ketchup. Any brand you want to use, so there's a good tablespoon of tomato ketchup. And then I'll add about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of tomato puree. So if you've cooked my sweet and sour, you'll see that it's very similar. Um, and if you've got my green book, it's very similar to the tofu in orange sauce as well. Obviously with the orange sauce, you will add some orange juice in there as well, okay? So a little bit of that bring come up to the boil. Okay, so I'm up to the boil. So I'll add my pineapple. Now, I think that needs a little bit of salt. Uh, the reason I didn't put salt in at the beginning is because I put the stock in and sometimes stock can be quite salty. So I'm going to add about two pinches, which will be about a teaspoon of salt. Okay, at the moment there's a lot of sweet in there. It wasn't overly sweet. I can get the aromats coming through. I'm getting the twang of the peppers and the onions. So let's just mix that in together and make sure that's incorporated before I give it another taste. I may even add a little bit more sugar just for that little bit extra sweetness. Okay, so. Yeah, just a little tiny bit more sugar. And we can adjust this as much as we want. You know what? I'm even going to add a little more, more square of ketchup. Now this is to my taste. If you follow the cookbook recipe to the letter you'll get what we used to serve in the restaurant, in my mum and dad's restaurant, okay, which was called the Panda. Um, when I cook, I cook it to my likings, so um, you've got to do the same. So when you get the recipe, have a play with it, add a little bit more sugar, a little bit more salt, even a little bit of pepper if you want to add a bit of heat. 
that's perfect, I think anyway. All I've done is just loosen my corn flour and water mixture. I'm just going to thicken my sauce. Um, as I add the corn flour, I keep the mixture mixing, um, otherwise it does get quite clumpy and uh, that's not very nice. So. Okay, there's that one done. Okay, so there we have it guys. If you wanted to finish this dish with a little bit of um, sesame oil, you could do. I didn't bring it out in the kitchen today, which is fine. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Let's see if I can do this just a bit. There you go, it's very saucy again. I do like it saucy though. And there we have it guys. My chicken and pineapple, um, straight out of your local Chinese takeaway, your favourite Cantonese restaurant. Please get there and go. You can see how simple it is. Five minutes of prep, 10 minutes in the wok, 15 minutes. So you think by the time you've picked up the phone, you've ordered your takeaway. They say, okay, it's going to be about half an hour. It's on the table in 15 minutes, providing you've got the ingredients. And you know, yes, I have the ingredients out already, but you will see in the new show, Chinese Takeaway Kitchen, um, I will be cooking pretty much from the cupboard. So um, yeah, you'll see how easy it is, all right. So until then guys, um, have a fantastic Wednesday evening. Um, goodbye Auntie Dawn, and um, if you're still watching Lola, I love you with all my heart. And um, yeah, I shall see you very soon, all right. Take care, bye bye.